The CRL Modified Division reaches its halfway point in 2009 with round 9 of 17. The Think First Iowa 50 from the Iowa Speedway in Newton. Alan Musico is the only driver so far in 2009 with two race wins, but it takes him nine rounds to capture his first ever Red Robin Pole Award. He shares the front row with not Kurt Shelton, but rather that's young Alex Neshmary in the seven car for this race in the next round at Charlotte. The 17-year-old, of course, impressed everybody last week by finishing second in his de uh, debut at Grand Detour and leading 29 laps. So Shelton decided to step aside and let Neshmary have more seat time before he takes the 0-1 car back for rounds 11 and 12 at Mosport in Edmonton. And here he is looking to the inside of Alan Musico, actually pulling ahead of the leader, coming off of turn four. But Musico's going to gather in all his momentum and just lead lap one at the line by two one hundredths of a second. However, as they go into turn one on lap two, Neshmary will complete the pass for the lead. And look who comes up on Musico's doorstep. That's all a CEO, Jen Walker, making her debut today in the 89 car. Walker qualified ninth for this race, but in one and a half laps, she's up to second and looking for more. A few seconds later, Neshmary completes the second lap of the day, but Walker's looking to his inside, shoves the young Edmontonian up the track, going into turn number one, and Jen Walker takes the lead. Walker has won a few late model races in her driving career. She is driving what was up until last week, the zero car. Henry Hughes made good in his promise to fire John Hawks and sell the car. Kurt Walker Motorsports bought it. And here is Jen coming off turn four to lead a lap in her first ever CRL modified division start. And speaking of start, here is her race start from above. She shares row five with Holden Robertson, the 27. Green flag comes out. She's already looking to the inside of Jay Janerin as they go into turn one. And in one fell swoop, she passes Janerin, Tina Lee, Randy Robinson, and Mike Lee and takes a breather before she challenges Chris Winter for fourth spot. They hit the back stretch and she looks down to the inside of Winter going into turn three. As they come off of four, she'll complete the pass in the 0-3 and begin challenging Robert Klezel for third before they even get to the start finish line. She complete the pass on Klezel and you know what happened next. Lap seven, Mike Falls pits from seventh because he has a loose pin on the deck lid and he needs to get it tightened. That's an unusual problem. Lap 13, Randy Robinson, who qualified sixth, fell back in the early shuffling, but here he is passing Alan Musico for second coming off of turn four. Robinson at this stage has the fastest lap of the race, and this is the highest he's run in a race all year. And as they go into turn one, you'll see last week's winner, C.J. Cameron of the 13, pass Musico for third. Point leader Carter Davids blew an engine in the 20-minute practice session yesterday. Qualified 26, but 13 laps in, he's already sliced and diced his way through the field. He's up to 17. The other Carter, Carter Lice is back from his one race break and he's bought sponsor, brought sponsorship with him I should say, to the 01 car online tire retailer MyTireMonkey.com sponsoring the 01 car for possibly the rest of the season. Lice will drive in the next round at Charlotte before handing the keys back over to Alex Neshmary for most board in Edmonton. But Lice will not be on the sidelines for those two races. Holex Lautenschlager Racing will loan him out to MT Motorsports. He'll drive the 45 car while Christian Jeffrey sits in the sidelines. Lice qualified 12th for today's race but at this stage, he's fallen back to 16th. Lap 18, Mike Falls' bad day comes to an end as he blows the engine and hits the safer barrier in turn one. It'll be the second straight DNF for Falls and the third this season. He's the only driver who has a DNF that has more than one. He holds up Chris Winter as he makes his way back to the garage. He did that to Sean Percy last week and cost the 62 car a points paying finish. Lap 20, Jen Walker's in lap traffic and can't weave through it, so Randy Robinson catches her up. As they go into turn four, he's looking down to the inside of the 89. Walker will just lead lap 20 at the line, but as they go into turn one, Robinson will complete the pass and take the lead for the first time in a CRL race this year. And there he is lapping Christian Jeffries after passing Jen Walker. Australian Reed Weber qualified 16th for today's race. Here he is in the three car. He's up to seventh. He, of course, handily won the third round of the season in Richmond, leading 50 of the 60 laps that night, but he hasn't scored points since Bristol. Looking good to do it today. Back to the front, here's Randy Robinson completing the 25th lap of the day. We're halfway through the race, and we haven't had a caution yet at a short track, nonetheless. Nathan Ferguson, second in points coming into today's race, qualified 27th in the four car, but at this stage of the race, he's moved up to fifth, and here he is looking to the inside of Reed Weber for fourth. Coming off of turn four, he'll just nip 
the three car at the line. This is just past the halfway point, and he'll complete the pass going into turn number one. Axel Anderson qualified 11th for today's race in the 97 car. At this point, he's up to sixth. Anderson, of course, won round two at Watkins Glen dominant in dominant fashion in wet conditions. But since then, he's only scored six points, and his last points-paying finish was a 12th at Bristol in round five. So the native Swede needs to score points or else he'll fall out of the top 15. Lap 31, here's points leader Carter Davids in 13th, looking to move into the points though. He's on the inside of Jay Janner for 12th as they hit the back straightaway. And as they go into turn number three, Davids will complete the pass on the 94 car and begin to set his sights on Landon Rohde in 11th. About the same time, Robinson gets caught up in lap traffic. He had uh, just under a two second lead the previous lap on Jen Walker, but she's cut it down to about eight tenths of a second. And there she is up at the top of the screen. But as they come off of two, Robinson will lap Chris Winter on the outside, and then he'll blow right by Carter Lyson, the 01 on the inside, as they head into turn number three. Lap 42, Reed Weber in fourth spot is gonna pit. Now, normally in the CRL, that's bad. However, this track is really tough on tires. And last year in the inaugural edition of this race, everybody made a pit stop. You basically need fresh rubber to get to the end of the race. And uh, here's proof that this is a routine pit stop. Here's Randy Robinson on lap 43, pitting from first place. Jen Walker also pitted on this same lap. And pretty much everybody was taking right side tires only and getting just a splash of fuel to get to the end. Carter Davids ahead of the 22 car. And here's more shots. There go uh, Davids and Robinson. There goes Walker. Here comes Chris Winter, Jeremiah Brooks, and Carter Lice. So see, these pit stops are routine. Robinson, however, led throughout all the pit stops. And here he is in the final lap. He's going to come off turn four, having led the final 30 laps of the race. And Randy Robinson wins the Think First Iowa 50 to pick up his first ever CRL Modified Division win. And finally, finally, finally show that promise he's shown all his career. And here's Jen Walker coming off turn four to finish second in a spectacular debut in the 89 car. Alan Musico in the, uh, during the pit stops got shuffled back to 12th. Here he is. Finishing in the final points paying position, he'll get two points today, one for finishing 12th and one for winning the pole. And here's the young hotshot, Alex Neshmary, finishing fifth in the seven car. So Neshmary doing a terrific job. He's already scored 26 points in his first two CRL Modified Division starts. But here is Randy Robinson doing the donuts. After picking up his first ever CRL Modified Division victory, Robinson gets two bonus points for today, one for leading the most laps and one for leading the fastest lap of the day. Let's take a look now at the top 12 finishers in today's Think First Iowa 50. Robinson winning the race. Jen Walker in her debut finishing second. Uh, CJ Cameron backs up his win at Grand Detour with a third place finish today. Nathan Ferguson finishes fourth. He'll take the point lead. We'll get to that in a moment. Alex Neshmary, fi Neshmary finishing fifth. Reed Weber scoring points for the first time since Bristol. Axel Anderson also scoring points for the first time since Bristol. Robert Klesel finishes eighth. Montana Moseas comes home in ninth, one lap down. Gordon Moss having a nice quiet run to finish tenth. J.F. Moreau finishes eleventh. And there is Alan Musico finishing twelfth. Top 15 in points. Like I said, Nathan Ferguson regained the points lead after today's race. He has uh, 72 points as we head to Charlotte. Carter Davids is nine points back. He got shuffled out of the points during the pit stops, so he didn't score today. Alan Musico, 17 points back. Reed Weber uh, has the same number of points with, uh, as Landon Rohde, but Weber is fourth because he has a win in Rohde. Doesn't. Tina Lee doesn't score again today. C.J. Cameron moves up to seventh. With the win, Randy Robinson is now eighth. Robert Klesel is in ninth. Mike Falls fails to score again today, so he falls back to 10th. Chris Winter also fails to score again today. He's back to 11th. Sean Percy fails to score again today. He finished 22nd, worst finish of the year. He's now 12th. Jeff Moreau clinging to 13th. Axel Anderson clinging to 14th. And there's Alex Neshmary in 15th. Next up, we head to the Tar Heel State for the inaugural Lowe's Let's Build Something Together special from the recently re-renamed Charlotte Motor Speedway in Concord, North Carolina. <laughs> 